Alan Wake is a strange game with a strange story, probably written by strange people with a strange knack for product placement. Good thing, because this game sold relatively poorly in the beginning of the sales despite all the marketing, and in my opinion being a pretty solid game. For what it's worth, the sales actually steadily made a comeback towards the end of its life. The game had an episodic story marketing campaign that was about five episodes to hype up its launch. It teased the basics of the type of story we were getting. It showed the town of Bright Falls, which is the game's setting, and a more mysterious, incomplete separate story that happens right before Alan Wake arrives. It makes it obvious that the game will be a horror game of some sort in a lonely little town. By the way, I recommend watching the promo before playing the game, and then watching it again First, it's going to be completely confusing, but after playing the game, it can only really be about one thing. As for the actual game, it's more of an action third-person shooter that also happens to be a horror story. Not a real one, more like a ghost story that probably never scared you. The kind with creepy elements, but doesn't get in your head. Not like Alien Isolation. It's an action game to be sure, with creepy elements. It's a story of mysteries and sacrifice and love. If you want to get really simple, we're Mario saving Peach. They use a mysterious and mystical dream sequence as an excuse to quickly give you a tutorial with some combat and supernatural stuff going on, even though after this you wake up in your car to a seemingly normal scenario. You meet a mysterious floating diver figure who helps you out in limited ways throughout the game. In this dream, he shows up midway and gives you a flashlight and a revolver. You learn the combat in this game revolves around using light as a weapon as much as your firearms. Enemies you fight are called the Taken. The Taken are corrupted and surrounded by darkness, which causes them to become invulnerable until you burn away the darkness with light. Only then will your gun now do damage to enemies. There are a few gun types and flashlights of varying power, and many environmental tools and gadgets. One gadget is the flare, a simple all-direction temporary light source that can give you some breathing room as Taken will generally be trying to stay away or get slowed down. Some light sources are so powerful that they will destroy Taken outright, like flashbangs which function as grenades. There's also flare guns, which are essentially rocket launchers. Like the flashbangs, they can destroy Taken outright, but also act as a regular flare for a very short time after impact. There are a few other firearms in the game, such as hunting rifles, but right now you have the shitty flashlight and the revolver. Pointing a flashlight at enemies will damage the darkness barriers, which I will call shields from now on. But all flashlights have an energy level that you use to increase the power of your light further damaging enemy shields. The energy comes back automatically if you stop boosting the light. But you can also collect batteries in your inventory that you can use by pressing Y to quickly refill your boost gauge when in a pinch. If you completely empty the gauge, you will be left with no light, with a delay on the automatic recharging. By default, you boost the flashlight with left trigger and at the same time it zooms you in. Your flashlight beam is your aiming reticle, so if you want to zoom your aim without using any boost energy, you can partially pull the trigger. Don't worry, you'll completely forget that's a feature and probably use it like once or maybe never. Rapidly tapping reload will also allow you to reload faster than if you let it load naturally. It is worth noting that shooting the Taken with their shields up stuns them even though it won't damage them. Remembering this can save you on rare occasions. It is also worth noting that boosting your light at Taken whether shielded or not stuns them, so strategic little bursts on enemies that are not currently your focus can be useful. You can't just stun them every two seconds since overall rapidly doing this will still eventually drain your flashlight energy. Also, you don't have to boost the flashlight for it to do light damage but at harder difficulties, you won't be getting much use out of its base damage. You're really going to need those shields to be gone during the heavier fights, so burn away. So when you get to the end of the dream, you get all fucked up by something, and then wake up in your car while you're on a boat entering the town. 
Here you can quickly see the care placed into the environment, and during this sequence you can see how much they wanted the town to feel alive. And I think they did it just fine with the train and the plane and the man with the cane, except there's no man with a cane, but I'm not quite sane so it's all the same. Oh, I'm sorry, that was lame and I feel shame. What's up with these seagulls? By the way, this whole town here, the game was in originally intended to be open world, but they decided to use the assets of the open world to create a more linear story. So if you think this world looks, I don't know, unusually complete, freaking gigantic, excessive for a linear story, well, that's why. You could actually do it on the boat a second ago as well, but this diner here is one of many areas where you can get to listen to and interact with characters. Everyone usually has but something interesting to say like and this. can give you insight into the story. Towns where everybody knew everybody. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. Hi, I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking for... Mr. Wake, Alan, Wake. Oh, God, I am your biggest fan. I know people say that all the time, but I really am. I'm glad to hear that. Rose. Rose. I'm looking for Mr. Stuckey. Carl Stuckey? Carl? Oh, of course, Mr. Wake. He must have gone to visit the restroom. He'll be back in a moment. I can't believe it. I've got all of your books. I got the cutout from the bookstore. Are you staying long, Mr. Do Wake? Do me a favor, Sonny! I could really use a tune right now. Coconut, number six in the jukebox. I'd do it myself, but both of my legs have gone to sleep. Bang! Mm -hmm. Don't go in there, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. I think I can handle it, ma'am. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to find Stucky, to get the key and get out as soon as possible. The waitress was giving me a headache. Overeager fans always did. Hello? Mr. Stuckey? Carl couldn't make it. Unfortunately, he was taken ill. But I have the key for you and instructions on how to get to the lake. Okay. I wish you a good stay in my cabin. I'll come by later to check how you've settled in. And to meet your wife. I insist. Thanks. You got lucky this time, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. This really ought to be fixed, and then I must remind Sarah to change the lights at the station. It's been too long already. I hadn't seen her leave, but the old lady was gone. Sounds better than your singing. Are you all right? <laughs> splendid, splendid! <laughs> Damn hernia. It swells up like a balloon if I lift anything heavier than a spoon. Yeah, splendid, splendid. It's been a long time, Tom. Good to see you. Hey, you wouldn't happen to have a bottle on you, would you, Tom? I wish. The Andersons, they're, uh, local musicians. We're waiting for Dr. Hartman to come pick them up. They wandered off from his clinic at the Cauldron Lake Lodge. Hi, Mr. Wake. Mission accomplished. The key and the directions. My hero. I got some flashlights, just in case. Hey, wait! Mrs. Wake! Your... Your keys! That diner was a real nut house. <laughs> Can you believe this place? This would make a wonderful setting for a book. We're supposed to be on vacation, Alice. I'll figure it out when we get back home. It's not like that. That's not... Alan? Alan? 
I don't, just don't. I don't want to hear it. God damn it, Alice. God damn it. I knew she wouldn't follow me in the dark. I needed some time alone to think things through. Oh. had gone dark. All the lights were out. This is what happens to your poor wife. After that, we wake up in the woods and try to find help after our car crash. Waking up in the crashed car felt like I had woken from one nightmare and entered another. I couldn't remember how I got there. All I knew was that something terrible had happened to Alice. Someone there? The loose sheets of paper were pages from a manuscript entitled Departure. That was the name I planned to use for the next novel I had never gotten started. I was named the author. I hadn't written it. I couldn't remember writing it. In the scene on the page, the hero was attacked by an axe murderer in the woods at night. Please! Hey! We need hey, Stucky you. the mechanic hey. again, but he's a dick There's now. There's been an accident! I need help! Listen, Deposit. I need to... Premium cabins for rent in... Nightfall! Oh, hell. Carl... Stucky! Please, to meet you. non reservable Reservation deposit required. Fair and square! <sighs> I had to figure a way out of this. Any second now, and Stucky would be knocking on the door with his axe like Nicholson in The Shining. And now we start to fight the Taken for real. We start out with two types of Taken. One that is weaker but more aggressively approaches you, and is quick but does not throw weapons at you. And another that does not move as quickly, with more shield health and actual health. They will primarily attack you with thrown weapons before closing in. None of the Taken have guns themselves, and only use melee weapons. After dealing with these enemies, we mosey along through the woods for a while. 
one of the recurring things you can find are these radios that play the radio show of the guy that you met on the boat in the beginning. There's often something said in them that relates to what has been going on in Bright Falls. I know most of you are probably in your beds by now, but if you're still up and around, take a moment. Step outside for a spell and breathe in deep. Mm, the weather is absolutely still. The sky is crystal clear. It's like the forest is quietly breathing along with you. As you listeners know, I'm a, I'm a night owl, and it's on nights like this I wish I wasn't cooped up in the studio. Uh, makes an old man like me wish I could just roam wild. <laughs> but here I am, and it would keep you company all night long if I weren't. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm not the only one staying up late. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, Pat, it's Maurice Horton. Hello, Maurice. What are you up to? Well, I was just taking Toby on his walkies. Oh, isn't it beautiful out there? Sure, but, Pat, the reason I called is that Toby heard something rustling in the undergrowth and took off after it, and I couldn't find him. Probably a rabbit. Sure. Toby loves rabbits. Well, sure. Anyway, I figured that, you know, if anyone runs into Toby, they could grab him. My number's on his collar. And Toby's a friendly dog? <laughs> Toby loves back, but we, we were pretty far from home, and it sounds like he went pretty wild there. Great dog, but he's just too dumb for his own good. <laughs> well, Maurice, it's out there now. Hope Toby comes home soon. Yeah, thanks, Pat. You have a good night now. As well as the radio log, you can sometimes find TVs that will play an episode of Night Springs, an in-universe TV show. In the game, it's about a minute-long short film. There are a few scattered throughout the game. Every episode is a weird question of reality and metaphysical stuff. Science. It bestows immortality on those who advance it to elevate all of mankind. Newton, Einstein, Sagan. Princes among men, but the price for such a legacy is steep indeed. In Night Springs, tonight's episode: a quantum suicide. If our lives are already written, it would take a courageous man to change the script. Having called a press conference, Dr. Barclay Colvin is about to demonstrate that very courage. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I am Dr. Barclay Colvin, and I'm glad so many of you could join me here at the Moorcock Institute. Tonight, I'm going to give a practical demonstration of the many worlds interpretation. As you can see, this is a loaded 9mm pistol. It shall be part of a thought experiment. And now, a real experiment, known as a quantum suicide. Did he say suicide? Is that a real gun? He's kidding, right? Uh, please, please, stay calm. There is no risk. Observe what occurs when I place the weapon against my own forehead. Now, you might think this round is merely a dud. Not so. Observe the flower pot. And yet, I myself cannot be harmed with this gun. With each pull of the trigger, two new realities branch off. One in which the weapon didn't fire, and one where it did. With my machine here, I have ensured that this reality is always the former. I have bestowed upon myself quantum immortality. Under no circumstances can this gun kill me. Uh, so wait, wait, wait. What you're saying is that every time you pull the trigger, in another reality, you die? Yes, yes, of course, but that's completely trivial. There's an infinite number of things that could happen at any moment, and they always do happen somewhere. The point is, this one thing did not happen here. You're insane, Colvin. Insane? Insane? Hey, was this thing supposed to be plugged in? I stumbled on it. You fools! Gaze upon quantum immortality! Poor, poor Dr. Colvin. 
felled by his own hubris or the ignorance of the masses. Perhaps he should have left the crate unopened, the decaying atom unobserved. Curiosity often kills the cat in night springs. Cabin on Cauldron Lake? she asked. The sheriff looked at me suspiciously. The early morning light flooded through the office windows. I would probably never have gotten out of the woods alive without her help, but I couldn't tell her the truth of what I'd faced the previous night. She'd think I was lying or crazy. She'd lock me up, and she wouldn't help me find Alice. Stucky is the first boss fight, by the way. Boss enemies move really fast and have particularly strong shields and more health. They often try to sneak up on you if they can and have minions alongside them. Stucky's body vanished, leaving behind only a lifetime of nightmares to come, assuming I'd reached the lights of the gas station alive. After the insanity I had just experienced in the darkness, the lights of the gas station felt comforting. At least for a moment, the sane world reasserted itself. The garage was a mess. It looked like someone had trashed the place, or that there'd been some kind of fight. There's only darkness. Outside the cabin, outside the story, there's only darkness. I can feel her presence in the dark. Just now, I could smell her perfume in the room. I'll reach her. I'll fix it up. I'll bring her back. The story will come true. If I stop, she's lost. I don't believe this. It'd been me on the TV, talking crazy. This is the first hint that Was you wrote your own story mind? and are now enacting that story. Rightful Sheriff Station. Oh, thank God, Sheriff. Sheriff Sarah Breaker, you are... I'm Alan Wake, but listen, I was in a car crash. My wife, Alice, she's missing. Calm down, Mr. Wake. We were staying in a cabin on the island, on Cauldron Lake. There's no island on Cauldron Lake, not since the big eruption in the 70s. Please, I can take you there, okay? You look like you've taken a pretty bad knock to the head. Are you okay? Listen. We'll figure this out. Please get in the car. We'll swing by the lake and then we'll go to the station, okay? Mr. Wake, have you seen Stucky, the guy who owns this place? I realized I couldn't tell her what had happened in the forest. She wouldn't have believed me. And then she wouldn't have helped me with Alice.
and all this is more or less a play-by-play -play of the first two-fifths of the game, not counting the two DLC expansions that explain more of the aftermath. The story is you trying to figure out how to rescue your wife, except it's kind of not since everything so far was semi-predetermined since the car accident near the beginning. There's a couple twists and turns, but it's more or less predictable, but not in a way that wasn't interesting. Pretty much everything makes sense within the logic of the story. There's an evil darkness within the lake, and it's not even that old, but around since the 70s. It's kind of refreshing for a sort of ridiculously overpowered mysterious evil to avoid the trope of the ancient overpowered mysterious evil that just woke up. Although it does just wake up, but there's a reason for that. And truth be told, it was never quite asleep. The darkness of Cauldron Lake is opportunistic. It can't just use its power on its own. It needs an artist to create art. Whether that's a song, a poem, or a story. The darkness needs to twist the creative medium into what it wants. Take what was created in art and bend it. Its full potential is locked behind this condition. That pretty much sums up the Alan Wake experience, I think. Alan Wake is no longer available on the Xbox Store, but I think you can re-download it if you already own it. I'm not sure. I haven't deleted it myself, so I'm obviously good. You can find a disc, though, via the new Tower of Babel, the internet. No DLC, though. Sad face. Try it out. It's fun. I'll eventually make a video about the Alan Wake DLC and the sequel game, Alan Wake's American Nightmare. The sequel is quite different from the first game. The first game has a heavier emphasis on the story with more grounded but certainly exciting combat scenarios, taking advantage of the tools of the darkness. The second game still has a story, of course, but it's got a huge action focus with far more bombastic fights and weaponry and the video showing the Halo 1 scene right at the beginning on normal difficulty when you test your armor and the guy says, looks like that's it.